Good morning. Good morning. Where are we headed? To Greenville today, to South Carolina. What? To go plan. <laughs> it's very early in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. It is officially planning weekend. I got a great night of sleep and I am so excited to start this weekend. I'm jumping ahead of myself. So let me tell you a little bit about what is going on here in today's video. So if you can obviously tell we are not in our New York apartment. We are, however, on one of my favorite weekends of the year, planning weekend. And you're probably like, Lauren, isn't every weekend in your life planning weekend and I know I know maybe it comes off that way every year since John Michael and I started dating we have what we have coined planning weekend now if you've been around on the channel for a while then you actually went along and came up to planning weekend with us last year truthfully y'all it is something that we do every single year now, when John Michael and I were still dating we were long distance different countries different time zones and normally when we traveled to see each other we'd pick some really cool location like we did Costa Rica, we did Denmark, we did so many fun places, and we were just like, spent a lot of time being tourists there. But we realized pretty early on that it was gonna be hard to see each other, and we both wanted to be really intentional about the time that we spent with each other. So that is where planning weekend came. Once a year, we would fly and meet each, meet each other. Somewhere that was obviously very fun, but like not somewhere that we felt like we needed to go out and necessarily explore. Obviously, we always do explore. We have always been planners, even though we may not plan in the way that we plan now, but we'd bring our planners, and we would sit down, and we would decide when can we actually see each other. So I was in school, and then I was working, and he was working, and he was living, and he was doing his own thing so we wanted to sit down and see okay when are time that we can both take off when do we have vacation time that overlaps how are we going to prioritize seeing my family and seeing your family and also making time for ourselves that's how planning weekend started and it has been something that as we have lived together and continued our relationship we value so much and we make it a priority to do every single year and so that's what we're doing right now we're currently on our planning weekend don't like get me in trouble. We came in earlier than the weekend, so it's it's n maybe not technically the weekend, but we're calling it planning weekend still. Right now we are in Greenville, South Carolina, which both John Michael and I graduated from Furman University. And we haven't been back since I graduated, so we're excited because the town itself has changed so much since we've been here. First and foremost, I am going to share all of the questions that we ask each other, all of the resources that we brought with us, things we think are important, and any updates or things that we would change as we go and we move forward there's going to be a corresponding blog post with all of that information there's will be a cute hyperlink down here so you'll go ahead and check that out and that'll be one place that houses everything i'll also be talking about them here in this video but i do this video every single year because i want to encourage you that if this is something that you're interested in doing or this is something that you want to do or think could be beneficial either for yourself or for you and a partner or for you and a family member I highly highly recommend it and I'm also just gonna give you all of the Greenville recommendations because I lived here for four years and it's a phenomenal city no matter what stage of life you're at so planning weekend for us is usually a two-day type thing this weekend is actually John Michael's sister and his future brother-in-law they're having a joint bachelor bachelorette party we're both in the wedding so we're going to go down there so we kind of like added planning weekend to the front end of that again I know we call it planning weekend but it's just two days out of the year anyway we got in last night and we weren't really going to do anything I kind of have all of these list of questions that I want us to to answer and some things to sit down and go ahead and do so first off when we got here it was too early to check into our hotel so we went to one of our favorite cafes it is called the swamp rabbit trail cafe and we sat down with our calendars and we plotted out what does the next year look like from right now so in october of 2021 all the way through october of 2022 we tend to do planning weekend in october and we understand that not all of these dates are necessarily final but there are a lot of things that are final in this year alone we are getting married so we have a lot of wedding related stuff we're trying to plan a hunt honeymoon like I said John Michael's sister's getting married so we have a lot of family obligations regarding that 
holiday schedules are already kind of coming into play, not only for this year, but the next year. And so we want to just see what we're already committed to, right? Because listen, while we plan out ahead, we know that not necessarily our families do the same, not necessarily our friends do the same, but we want to have a big picture of what the year looks like so that when we are asked, Hey, do you want to come on this girl's trip? Or do you want to come on this guy's trip? Or, Hey, the family's going to be weeding, meeting up this weekend at the beach. Do you guys want to come? We want to know what our schedule is like so that we're just not blindly saying yes to things and that we have enough time throughout the year to rest and think about ourselves and prioritize ourselves. Now I I did mine, some in a paper planner, a lot of it in a my Google Calendar. Same for John Michael, used his paper planner some, but did a lot in the Google Calendar as well, just to write out all of that information. That's kind of the first thing that we do. We like to be able to know what our calendar looks like so that when we start to talk about larger things later in the weekend, like routines and goals and things like that, that that is top of mind for one another. That's pretty much the big thing that we uh, did while we were there that also took it always takes longer than I think it would then we went ahead and we stopped and we got a COVID test just to be as safe as we could while traveling after we got into checked into the hotel we were able to go out and get some dinner and then we went out afterwards to this really new cool gin bar called Juniper and y'all listen planning weekend doesn't just have to be like holed up in a hotel room hanging out with our planners we also want to make it fun we also want to explore the city that we're in and there we got some drinks we got to chat just like hang out a little bit then we took some time to start thinking about what are some of the routines that we want to cultivate for the new year now today we'll dive much deeper into that really talking through things that we can do to support one another in that but last night it was more just like getting it out in the open like in an ideal world what do those routines look like where do we think our routines are lacking and like what routines are important and which ones are not and it's time for me to go ahead and grab breakfast at one of my favorite spots with one of our really good friends so I'm gonna to go ahead pick her up and just get to hang out and have some fun hello Say hello hello we're just hanging out had breakfast at tandem one of yes. our favorite spots sp is about to graduate i am <laughs> doing lots of fun things all right we'll talk soon y'all Oh, she's going right up front there. Okay, so we are getting ready to go out tonight. We're going to have, a, I think, a wonderfully romantic dinner out tonight, don't you? Yeah, I think so. That's the plan. But we wanted to give you a little bit of a recap about what today was. I promise you that not all of planning weekend is just like planning 24-7. We took a morning to ourselves doing kind of individual stuff, and then we linked up this afternoon. Yeah, so you played golf. How'd you shoot? Not very well. <laughs> We're not going to say any scores out loud. <laughs> I went and got breakfast with a friend of mine. Got to do a little shopping. We met up at, it was funny, like a cafe we used to go and study at, which was really fun. And so there we did a little bit of personal work and then started really diving into what planning weekend is, which is like thinking about our plans and our goals and really setting up ourselves to be the best as we set the framework for the next year, which is 2022. So we actually ended up getting kicked out, not kicked out, but the first- We closed it up. Yeah, we closed it out. The first cafe kind of closed early and so then we moved to a second one which was also an ice cream parlor so like midday ice cream no one's complaining about that and the second portion what we did was really goal setting focus so on the first day of our planning weekend we looked at the schedule right because we wanted to know at a high level what is everything that we have coming up what are we committed to and where are we like spending our time because that does also inform the types of goals that we set. Definitely. Yeah. It's like filling in, you know, you have the big, the big things going on, the big pillars of the year and then everything kind of fits in around it. Yeah. 
So if you watched this last year, then I actually, the Cultivate What Matters has a couple's goal setting guide. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that this year. Um, I don't think that we suffered from it or... No, we kind of did a hybrid thing last year. It was Cultivate What Matters and Moxie Life. So yeah. like this year we just decided to take a little bit of what had worked from that and then right. also kind of what we knew would work for us. Gets better over time. Exactly. And we kind of focused on, you know, we did the scheduling thing yesterday. Today was kind of the individual and the couple's goal setting. So mm -hmm. we do both individual goals and we talk about our individual goals. We brainstorm our goals. These are not necessarily like, yeah, we're not setting anything in stone. It probably, you know, they change throughout the year. This is more of like, you know, sitting down. What are your big goals for the year that come to mind right away? Kind mm -hmm. of dig into those. How mm -hmm. can we support each other? And then also the couple side of the goal setting. Cause like, honestly, a lot of my individual goals are really couple goals yeah. at the end of the day. So yeah. when we dig in, we find that out. It's a long day. I mean, yeah. it's a lot to think about and reflect on this past year and kind of what I wasn't necessarily content with and things I want to quote unquote change. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into that. It's also yeah. exciting. So like emotionally, it's just like lots of highs and, and some also some lows, you know? So yeah, it's, definitely. it's I don't know if draining is the right word for me, but I'm definitely feeling a little tired yeah. right now. Which is why we have to go, we gotta get a drink, we gotta go hang out, we got to still. Maybe an espresso martini. Maybe an espresso martini. Ooh. I don't know, I might be up Ooh. all night. Ooh, we'll see. <laughs> all in all, today was really good and just really super reiterating that like, I think it's important to think about what your year ahead looks because we were there. Were, I feel like there were some goals that we were like, "Ooh, that's kind of lofty." Like, you know, given the amount of travel that we have, given the wedding, given the other yeah. things, like you can kind of you just be accountable for someone else. You know, yeah. someone I know, Lauren. So when she sets a goal that's purposefully too lofty, I'm like, "You're come on, yeah. like let's tone that down a little bit." And vice versa, if she said something that's a super low bar, it's like you literally already achieved that yeah and this isn't a maintenance goal you said you wanted it to be a stretch goal you know something right. you achieve like you're already there so yeah. one thing that we do that i really love and a piece of if you are setting goals this year i really love that i have john michael set one goal for me and i set one goal for john michael he is someone who knows me better than anyone else or like at least he believes so but um <laughs> whether it's your partner whether it's a family member or just like a close friend i think just like john michael was saying i think it's really nice for someone to set a goal for example you know i have these big lofty goals and john michael's goal was like i really want you to focus on restorative tasks and focus on slowing down because everything else for me is so go 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 yeah she has one speed and it's like light speed <laughs> uh the other thing i'll say that i thought was neat that kind of came up in our conversation today is like you know your goals are obviously not obviously like can change throughout the year but it's not a race, but even if it was a race, you're the only one participating in it and you get to decide who you invite to like spectate and cheer right. you on. And so like we invite each other into each other's kind of goal race, if you will, and like cheer each other on. But all that negative, those negative people in your life, you don't have to invite them and share your goals with them necessarily because you're worried about how they're gonna respond. So right. I think that was kind of a cool metaphor. Lauren loves races, so you and may I'm be your, hearing that more often. And I'm your biggest fan. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so fit check. Blazer, run the runway. Jagged, cotton. What? I don't know. Corduroy, corduroy jacket. Literally, tell me what this is called. Look. Yeah, don't cotton. Say, yeah, cotton. Okay. I told you. Okay, okay. This is a jumpsuit and it is run the runway. This is a t shirt from someplace. <laughs> <laughs> pants, where are your pants from? Made. Made well. <laughs> And then your shoes are Converse. Ow. <laughs> and then my shoes are Soul Society. Ow. <laughs> okay, we she's can't. a hazard. We cannot do fit check. It's been a, about a week since we were on our planning weekend. We, Six days. Yeah, we were in Greenville. We had so much fun. And then we went to the engagement party. We were there for John Michael's sisters and future brother-in-law's joint. And I guess my also future sister and brother-in-law yeah your future sister um, and brother -in -law. my in-laws we then went to their joint bachelor bachelorette party and then we came home and it's just been kind of a whirlwind since we've gotten back getting back into the swing of work and routines and things like that but we did want to reflect on the experience of the weekend and kind of recap yeah what everything. we loved what we didn't love what we do differently next time and all of those things i think coming out of it both of us just feel good like i i don't know if there's ever been a planning weekend that we haven't come out and felt good yeah it's a form of self-care, I think. Planning weekend is a form of self-care. And couple care. 
in couple care. That's definitely true. I made that up. It was nice because this wasn't the planning weekend in which like we took all of our planners and our stickers and all of those things. It was more just like the scheduling. It's, it's kind of a strategy weekend. Yeah. You know, kind of creating our strategy and our plan for the next year. You know, just generally speaking, having goals that are shared, and we've talked about this, but like having shared goals, having a shared idea, um, you know, obviously hearing you talk about your goals for the year, me sharing my goals for the year, is just really helpful to know how we can be more supportive. Yeah. Got this new blanket. <laughs> we haven't necessarily finalized all of our goals for the next year, but I think it was nice to just be able to sit down and talk about them, to brainstorm, to take stock of where we are. We always love to do planning weekend. We usually try to do it either in September or October because when it comes to the holiday season, it just gets chaotic, right? Like we go into Thanksgiving with our family, then we go into Christmas, and then we're going into New Year's, and you know, it's taking off of work and getting back into work and just going through all the motions we want to have had thought about these things prior to it definitely it's just chaotic and also i think the end of the year if you set year-long goals is really important to just reflect have some time to celebrate any yeah. progress you've made whether it's a little bit or a lot of it whether you feel like you accomplished it or not and so cramming in in your case moving into a new planner starting new goals making a plan for those new goals that's just like a lot on top of family which i know i'm just repeating what you're saying yeah. but in kind of a different way like i don't do a good job of celebrating progress and yeah. like that's something i'm trying to work on and so having the last couple of weeks last month to focus on that because i've already thought intentionally about 2022 is nice planning weekend 2021 any goals takeaways for next year when we do this survive the year <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot of travel. We have a lot of events. We're getting married. We're getting married next year. Um, Your parents are getting married, Minnie. Yeah, so there's a lot, you know, there's a lot wrapped into, there's just a lot of stress with planning a wedding. Just going with the flow is gonna be a challenge for us. Yeah. It always has been. That's something I'm trying to cultivate. That's a big kind of abstract goal. Yeah, well I was talking more like any anything different you want to do next year i don't know we've done this for a couple years now so yeah, i feel the, the process is pretty refined we've done a bunch of different things and i think we have a good process so no i, I probably wouldn't change too much i think maybe that, location yeah that's what i was going to say i think the biggest thing that i would change this year i think it was really hard to do planning weekend and then immediately go into like a bachelor bachelorette weekend so if we did this again next year i would like want to go and rent an airbnb upstate and take many and just kind of have it more relaxing more again. relaxed yeah, yeah less less outside stimulation less feeling like you have to go do stuff yeah i get that yeah so that's what we have here for you guys today y'all i hope that this inspires you to have your own planning weekend yes we like to go out of town but we also understand that we do not have kids and we have the flexibility to be able to do this please know that you do not have to take a weekend away to be able to go and do something like this you could do this hanging out and just going out and doing a date night. You could do this by just staying home and doing it late one night. Early in one morning. Or early in the morning. So just because we decide to get away, it's a tradition that we have. We just hope that you're able to take some of the ideas that we put together to help you prepare for the next year. Don't forget, I have a blog post that is currently live that talks through all the supplies that we brought, all of the questions that we asked one another and some of our favorite tips and tricks, as, some, as well as some recommendations for Greenville in case that you guys are ever in the South Carolina area. Planning weekend 2021 was a wrap. We're looking forward to it here in 2022. All right, y'all. So as always, my name is Lauren here with Plan With Lore. I'm John Michael. And this That's is Minnie. Minnie. <laughs> and we'll, and we'll see y'all next time.